Hey church, happy Tuesday to you. Good to see you. I'm Joe Hollenbach. I'm a member here at Christ Church and so glad you're tuning in today. Um, today's part two of a uh, two-part series that I'm doing. Uh, so if you haven't seen part one, I would recommend going back to Monday's uh, upload and checking it out real quick so you get a little context. But if not, if you want to keep watching, I hope and uh, really think there's something here for you. Uh, at least that's my intention. So yesterday we talked about um, the anxious thing that I feel when I read the idea that I'm supposed to be holy in the image of God. I'm supposed to be at his level of holiness. Um, and today I want to talk about how we remove some of that anxiousness and how we stay consistent in pursuit of God's holiness in our lives. Um, now, I'm going to preface this by saying this is completely personal. This is my experience. It might not be the same for you. Um, and if that is the situation for you, I'm sorry, but I hope that maybe this is something you can connect to that I'm sharing. For me, um, I really feel like both in cult like American culture, but just in general in people, um, gratefulness is a massively uh, underdeveloped skill. Uh, gratefulness is something that we almost never have in our culture. Um, it, it only comes kind of as a quick thing, something dismissive, thank you, you know, have a good day, that sort of thing. It, it's transactional, basically, in America. And for me, that's, a, that's really disappointing and kind of a bummer because I feel like gratefulness has so many goodness, uh, so many good things and, uh, and so much goodness to it. Uh, for instance, I mean, just from a non-spiritual standpoint, Mayo Clinic released a study a couple years back that said practices of, of gratitude, like willful actions towards gratitude, actually increase your uh, sleep quality, um, improve your immune system, and actually can help prevent disease. So just having a good heart is actually healthy for you. Having a grateful mindset is going to keep you healthier than not having one. And the reason for that for me is pretty clear as a follower of Jesus, God wants us to have grateful hearts and there's an obvious reward to it in that it just, it lifts our spirit and it makes us good. But when it comes to holiness, for me, the only time that I can actually pursue the heart of God is when I enter into his presence, into the Holy Spirit with a heart of thankfulness. So I just want to kind of share what works for me in you know the pursuit of living a holy life and and up front like i said yesterday we're gonna fall short we're human and the great news is the holy spirit knows that and he's gonna come alongside us and just keep urging us as long as we're honest and open and pushing towards what he desires in our life as we become his creation so for me i'm a big poetry guy um, so the psalms have always spoken to me and specifically when it comes to gratefulness, it's Psalm 138 for me. Um, the entire chapter, which I'm not gonna read, it's pretty short, it's only about 13 verses, so I do recommend go read it. Um, but there's so much meat on the bone when I get to Psalm 138 in terms of why I have reason to be thankful for the goodness of Jesus in my life. Um, and I've highlighted some of the things that I think are most important. No matter what good you've experienced in your life, God's the source. You can not acknowledge it, you can acknowledge it. It doesn't change the fact that the goodness of the Lord is where all good things come from. Um, we should be grateful for that. You should thank Him every morning for the things you have. That's a, that's a great way to begin the day. Um, he's a promise-keeping God, we learn in 138. And all you have to do is read the Old Testament and watch as you know, the Israelites bumble through uh, false promise or uh, mistake after mistake, and yet he's consistent with it. Like there's scriptural um, foundation for the idea that if he's promised you something, he's going to follow through. If there's a promise from God, you can guarantee that any um, sadness or, uh, I don't know, any feeling of sorrow that you have over it not coming into fruition, it's completely on our end. He's keeping promises he makes. That's something to be grateful for. We serve an ever constant and always faithful Lord. He's not only listening to us, this is the third thing, he's not only listening to us, but he's answering prayers in ways that strengthen us. We learn in Psalm 138. That one for me was amazing um, because I have a four-year-old and I love doing prayer time with him because his idea of prayer at the moment is uh, kind of a transactional thing at times. It's, I pray for the things I want, or I pray for the things I love. He'll pray for Fortnite. He'll pray for, you know, silliness like that. And what I find is that, you know, I'm not too different from him. I'm 30 years older, but I often have caught myself and checked myself in my prayer time 
and I'm praying for the things I desire, not necessarily what the things that will make me holy. And the cool thing is God will still answer those prayers, but in ways that lead us down the path of holiness, that strengthen who we are. I'm thankful that He can correct my mistakes and my silly prayers. Uh, the thing that I really take the most from 138, Psalm 138, though, is this. He values the down and out. I think we've all been there. We felt lower than the tiniest ant. We felt like there isn't a person in the world who gives a care or concern for us. And the weird thing is, all that self-pity sits upon us and we never even realize that Jesus can never be nearer than we are in that moment. He truly seeks out the down and out. So I really am grateful in my times of depression, in my times of sadness. I have to remind myself, but I tell myself, God's near. I just have to pay attention and be grateful about it. And for me, that is one of the best ways to focus and enter into the Holy Spirit. I don't know if these connect with you. I have no idea. But I really do believe that one of the best things we can develop as a Christian is a heart of gratitude unto the Lord, unto Jesus, and all that He does for us daily. And make it a persistent habit, a behavior, an attitude, that we wake up with the gratitude on our lips, that we go to sleep with the gratitude in our heart, and watch as it permeates your day. And then watch as the gratefulness prepares the way for you into the next level with Jesus. I hope you all have an awesome Tuesday. I hope something here was useful. But I just want to say it's great to be able to talk to you all. And I love doing these because it's great to express things that we're struggling with together. So I hope that you'll struggle with holiness because it's the best decision you could ever make. Take care, you all.